Okay, so now the problem that we will be looking at <laughs> next is going to be <coughs> the maximum subarray problem. So this is a totally different problem. It's not a sorting problem. The problem is the following. <coughs> if you have an array like this, minus 1, 3, 4, <coughs> minus 5, 9, minus 2. You are given an array, and you are asked to find the subarray that has the maximum <coughs> the maximum sum so the the problem is to find a subarray that has the maximum sum of course if all the elements were positive the solution is trivial what would that solution be sum of all items yeah take all items so there is no problem it's, it is going to be trivial if all of them were positive but the problem will be interesting when you have a mix of positive and negative numbers. So in this case, you know, by inspection here, <coughs> what's, what's the subarray that has the maximum sum? Nine, nine plus four. Nine? Nine. Uh, what, if, what about three plus seven minus five plus nine? Yeah. How about this? So in this case, this is the maximum subarray. 3, 4, this is 7 minus 5 is 2 plus 9 <laughs> is 11. Can you find the subarray that sums to with a sum greater than 11? I don't think so. But now the point is to figure out an algorithm for solving this problem. Now, what would be a brute force algorithm for solving this problem? At all combinations brute force al what are these combinations and what would be the running time so y n squared so describe the algorithm you have to run every combination of everything inside of it basically so you have to start the first one then add and then sort or that take the next two or that take the next three store that take the next four so when you say next one what do you mean by one is it an uh, an index yeah you have to just index up until you go through all of them, then you have to minus off the first one and do this. You have to have two indexes. Yeah. Start zero index and then the plus, take it by itself and then do the plus one and just keep going through every one. Once you get to the end, you subtract and do it again. Yeah, so. You'd have to take sub ones as well if you didn't get anything. I don't know, you have to make yeah. sure you got everything. Yeah, okay. So that's gonna, let me, let me try, <coughs> uh, uh, try to clarify it further uh, so the idea is the solution to this problem is a start index and an end index so in this given instance one two three four five so the solution here is one four you start at index one and end at index four this is our solution now in order to solve this problem in a brute force manner you try all possible start indices so you start at zero and you compute all the sums that start at zero. So basically for every, for zero, you, you try every end index, every index. Uh, so that alone is theta of n. Only to find the subarrays that start with zero and end somewhere else in the array. But you have to do it again for three, for index one, and then for index two, for index three, for index four. So this state of n, you have to do it uh, n times. In fact, it's going to be a triangle, triangle, not a not a square, because uh, in for the th uh, for the index one, you will only need to do. You will not have to worry about zero. You'll have to worry about these, and then for index two, you'll have to worry about what comes after it. So the running time will be similar to insertion sort. To the insertion sort running time. So it's going to be a triangle that will give you theta of n squared. So this is brute force, but we would like to find uh, a more efficient algorithm using divide and conquer. So let's see if we can discover a more efficient algorithm using divide and conquer. So the first attempt should be what? Make the array into something. Yeah, just cut it in half. 
Right. So we're trying a divide and conquer approach. So the first idea that comes to our mind is just splitting the array into two equal subarrays. Now, okay, if I split it into two equal subarrays, and if I find the maximum sum here, maximum uh, left sum, and the maximum right sum, will that be sufficient to solve the problem? No. Why not? So what, what else do I need to consider in addition to the right, left sum and the right sum? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. So I need to consider the subarrays that cross the center. So basically, any subarray will, there are three possibilities for any subarray. It either belongs completely to the left subarray, or belongs completely to the right subarray, or crosses the center. Only three cases. Either it's entirely on the left, entirely on the right, or it crosses the uh, the center. Now, okay, ca I can find the maximum left and the maximum right recursively, but now, in order to find the maximum subarray that crosses the center line, can you think of an efficient algorithm for finding the maximum subarray that crosses the center line? So, we need a, an efficient algorithm to find a maximum subarray that crosses the center line. Now the good thing about finding a, a maximum subarray that crosses the uh, that crosses the center line is that we don't have to worry about two ends. We already know one end of each half of this subarray that will cross or not each half, each uh, division of this array that crosses the center line. So does this give you a hint? How can we find the maximum subarray that crosses the center line? Yes. So if you find the uh, maximum subarray for the right or the left, you know uh, the like the. So where do we start from? So we start from the left. Where from the left? From which index? So you can start from the the minimum index that comprises that. Uh, subarray. I don't know it yet. I want to find it. Uh, I want to find it. We're trying to find it. So, in this case, you are talking about one index one, yeah. but I don't know it yet. Uh, so, uh, starting from the center. Well, starting from the center, yes, because I know that the subarray that will cross the center line is going to consist of two pieces: one piece to the left of the center, and one piece to the right of the center. And I know the end, uh, one of the indices of each piece. So I know that this piece is going to start at this index, and this piece is going to start at this index. So I don't have to worry about finding two ends of these two subarrays. So I know that on the left, I'm going to start from the center, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going left, right? And in going left, what should I do? Yeah. What should I do? Go left and then what do on the way? Compute the sum and hmm? yeah, and keep track of the max. So I'm going left. So initially my sum is going to be 4. Then I go left. My sum is going to be 7. Then I have minus 1. My sum is 6. Right? Then 7, I just keep track of the maximum value that I get when I go from the center to the, uh, to the start of the array. Then I can do the same thing on the other side. So I can start from 3, and then my sum now is 3. I go this way, 3, sorry, uh, this is minus 5. Then 9, minus 5 and 9, that's 4. Then I have minus 2, so my sum drops to 2. 
So you go right and you keep track of the sum, and the maximum sum that I encounter on the way is going to be 4. So I have to mark, in addition to keeping track of the sum, what else do I have to track? The index at which this sum is found. So while going from center to left, I have to keep track of the index, which is here index 1. I want to remember that at index 1, I found the best sum. Of course, you know, initially the best sum is going to be here, which is 4. Then when I go to this point, I find a better sum, so I update the sum. Then when I go to this, the sum becomes worse, so I just don't update. Because I, I did not find something better, I, find, I found something worse. Okay? So on both sides, on both sides, I just go from the center to the left, center to the right, and then find the maximum sum on the left and the maximum sum on, sum on the right. Then what should I do with them? Add them. Yes, I should add the two sums. But will that necessarily be the solution to the problem? No. 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 What should I do? Variable. Yeah. So I have to compare three different solutions. L is the maximum uh, sum for a, a left subarray, maximum left and maximum right and maximum crossing. And the best of them is going to be the solution. <coughs> the best of them is going to be the, the solution. Okay? So let's try to write some uh, pseudocode, some high-level pseudocode. So maximum <coughs> subarray, array, P and R. So first I cut it in half. So I do Q equals P plus R divided by 2. Uh, then I do uh, max subarray of A and what? P and Q minus 1. And this will give me L. And then I call max subarray of A, Q plus 1, and R. And this will give me R. Then I call maximum crossing subarray of A, P, Q, and R. Then what do I do? The max of the three, yeah. Then I return, return max of L, R, C. What did I miss? And what's the base case? If, if P equals R, what should I do? If you have an array of size 1, what's the maximum subarray? What's the? Array. Yeah, it's just that value. Return A of P. Now, I'm not going to write the maximum crossing subarray. I will leave that as an exercise for you. So this is left as an exercise for you. So this is the algorithm that starts from the center and finds two sums and then adds them up. So this should be, this should be easy to write. The maximum crossing subarray. Okay. Now, in an actual implementation of this, you will have to find a way to track the indices. 
because uh, we are not only interested in returning the sum, we are interested in returning the indices that, uh, that give us the maximum sum. So in this case, the indices are 1 and 4. One is the first, the start index, and four is the end index. Okay? All right, so now, who can analyze this algorithm? So this is divide and conquer. So who can analyze this? So let's first write a recurrence. Well, is this like quick sort or merge sort? Sort. Yeah, why is it like merge sort? <laughs> yeah, so this is an easy one. We always divide in half. So we all, the division is always the same. So it's going to be easy like merge sort. It's not going to be complicated like quick sort. So this is T of N. What's this? This is the base case. And what's this? What is it? What does it mean? This is the divide time, yes. This is the divide time. Equals theta of 1. And what's this? The maximum subarray of on the left hand side. So what's the running time for this? Yeah, it's T of N by 2. And this? T of N by 2. And this? T of N. T of N, because this is a single scan, right? If we start from the center and we go left. And each process takes constant time. We just compute the max. And again, a linear scan from center to right. So this is theta of n. And what's this? So this is the combined time. What's the combined time here? Eight. Finding the max of three numbers. Constant. It's constant. Finding the max of three numbers is a constant. So now the recurrence relation is going to be t of n equals 2t of n over 2 plus, n. plus theta of n, which is same as merge sort. It's the same as merge sort because you have t of n over 2, t of n over 2. And whatever processing you are doing, at the, the processing that you are doing at each level is linear, is linear time, which is in this case finding the maximum crossing subarray. Okay? Any questions on this?